it caught our attention on September 15th and 16th when the Wall Street Journal had a front page story read as follows. Here's the headline. Tech firms face political pressure. Here's the first sentence. Technology firms, which long enjoyed a hands-off approach from Washington, aimed at fostering their growth, are now facing more political challenges from both countries, monopoly that we just heard about, amid growing concerns over the company's size, influence, and perceived lack of accountability. That column was written by three Wall Street Journal uh, columnists, John McKinnon, Byron Tao, and Douglas McMillan. And we're very pleased to have with us on the call today, Byron Tao, who co-authored that piece, which I know got a lot of attention. So Byron uh, joins us from the Wall Street Journal's uh, Washington DC Bureau, where he covers uh, politics in general and uh, the White House in particular. And he has, before uh, being with the Wall Street Journal, Byron was with uh, Politico, he covered the Obama administration, lobbying, campaign finance, reform, and politics. So Byron, that makes you, I think, uh, an expert on the duopoly that, uh, that we heard about. And I know we have a number of people on the call from uh, Silicon Valley. So please give us an update where things stand now and what are we likely to see in the future with regard to the duopoly attacking tech world? Thank you, Byron. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, I am actually a, I should correct, uh, I should uh, make a quick update. I'm actually a Capitol Hill reporter these days. Uh, I switched over at the beginning of the Trump administration, end of the Obama administration. And I come to you from a phone booth on Capitol Hill uh, in the Senate press gallery. So sorry about the uh, not so great uh, visuals. But uh, right now, it seems like Silicon Valley is facing uh, one of the most challenging environments in recent memory. Uh, a couple things on the radar here. Uh, number one is, and I think most importantly, are the Senate Intelligence Committee hearing and um, House Intelligence Committee hearings into uh, Russian meddling. Uh, we're expecting to have Google and Facebook and Twitter uh, on November 1st, I believe. Both hearings will be on that day. I think it will be a morning, afternoon kind of thing. Beyond that, uh, there'll probably be some sort of campaign finance reform legislation debate that follows those hearings, specifically aimed at tackling uh, basically foreign advertising on social media. So advertising on YouTube, advertising on Facebook, advertising on Twitter, uh, it remains to be seen how far that will go. Uh, and at that hearing, we expect a lot of tough questions about fake news and bots and trolls. Um, and beyond that, just broader in the political environment here on Capitol Hill, uh, there's a couple of other things that you should keep your eye on. Namely, uh, Marsha Blackburn has uh, proposed some privacy legislation uh, that would basically apply the same kind of net neutrality privacy standards that telecoms have had to face uh, to all tech companies. So uh, any sensitive data like browsing history couldn't be sold by Google or other social media companies. There's, of course, the net neutrality fight at the FCC. Uh, the Senate is debating a sex trafficking bill that would curb some of the immunity that tech companies have. Uh, there's always the possibility of new breach data, breach notification legislation that would get revived after this Equifax hearing. And uh, there are hearings planned on this Equifax breach, and I expect that there'll be a lot of fireworks there. And uh, broadly, just it all adds up to Silicon Valley facing uh, one of the most, the toughest political environments in recent memory, uh, as our article notes, that these are companies that were the darlings of the Obama administration. They've generally been regulated with a fairly light touch when compared to other industries. Uh, but we're seeing voters upset about election interference. We're seeing consumers uh, increasingly focused on privacy. And generally speaking, we're seeing a growing concern on the left and the right about concentrations of power in big companies and in government. Uh, and today on Capitol Hill, Sheryl Sandberg was here. She met with the Congressional Black Caucus. She faced a lot of tough questions about diversity in her company. She got to add an African-American board member to Facebook uh, sometime soon. Uh, she faced tough questions yesterday from some of the intelligence community leaders about uh, Facebook's efforts to combat foreign propaganda and fake news. Uh, and so this is a difficult environment for these tech companies, and uh, they would do well to prepare very seriously for these hearings that are coming up and to keep a very close eye on what these congressional committees are doing. 
uh, the upshot for them, the upside for them, I should say, is that sort of no one ever really went bankrupt uh, betting against Congress doing nothing. Uh, that is the default state of Congress these days. So a lot of these proposals that are floating around are just that, they're proposals and they may never be, uh, they ne may never pass into law, but hearings and, and public scrutiny and uh, the public spotlight that Congress can shine on a company aren't something that you should uh, underestimate. And so uh, I would advise these tech companies that these are serious issues and there are lawmakers on both sides that have uh, tough questions for them. And uh, with that, I'd, uh, I'd like to keep it short and take any questions or uh, discuss any issues that you might uh, want to talk about. Well, Byron, this is uh, Charlie. Can you hear me okay? I can. Can you hear me? Uh, let me just ask one thing. To what extent um, are American legislators likely to take a page from what's been happening and growing in Europe over the last couple of years, where, for example, the several members of the European Union are very, very interested in the privacy issues of big data collection, mining of that data. And then second, you see a growing emphasis on uh, collecting tax payments based on where some of the, some of the high tech companies are sourcing their uh, operations. So are we, are the Europeans uh, influencing us, inspiring some of the uh, Capitol Hill uh, activity? Well, I, I mean, I don't see any indication that we're going to get the sort of broad, broad privacy rules that the EU has. Uh, on the other hand, there is talk among some lawmakers about privacy, and that does, isn't just limited to Democrats or liberal lawmakers. Uh, as I mentioned, Marsha Blackburn has a, a privacy bill that doesn't quite go as far as uh, European law does, but is a, is a significant uh, step forward in regulating what internet companies can do with people's private data. And I think you saw that same kind of outrage uh, when the, I think it was Congress, I think they rolled back a rule about the sharing of browser data. And uh, there was a ton of consumer and voter outrage about the idea that their browser data could be sold by a giant telecom. And so I do think lawmakers are getting increasingly receptive to uh, more privacy legislation, or at least tougher questions for some of these Silicon Valley companies uh, about exactly what they're doing with this data, how they're safeguarding it, and whether there needs to be stronger, tougher, or newer rules about uh, how to secure it. Chris, do you want to open up our, uh, our call line? Can you sure. Uh, I think first up we have uh, Dilawar Syed, uh, our uh, search C board member. Take it away. Thank you, Chris, and, and thank you, uh, uh, folks, for a terrific call, Byron. I appreciate your uh, perspective. Um, I, I'm a tech entrepreneur here. In fact, today I'm at, at Boxworks. It's a day-long conference that Box is holding. I just wanted to share you know, one thought about the general narrative about tech. Tech in itself is not monolithic. So when we say tech companies, or we say Silicon Valley, we some assume it's all about Google and Facebook and Microsoft. And <laughs> there is a lot more to it. And I think our our purpose will be better served in terms of engagement as well as also unearthing issues and solving if we were to really look at stuff deeper. Because I think the, the argument here is really about um, more about big companies and small companies. Um, folks, you know, companies that, you know, when, when they get to a certain point in scale, they have disproportionate power. And I think the likes of Facebook and others are right now at that stage. I don't think that is, um, that would be, you know, reflective of the industry as a whole, because the valley, especially tech industry overall, you know, it's 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 always been very entrepreneurial. You know, there are companies like Box that didn't exist five or ten years ago, right? In terms of where they are today, so I think we just have to be very careful also in 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 how we look at these issues and make sure that obviously we call out when there are challenges. But um, in some ways, some of the big companies are also, if you will, a threat to the more uh, due to sort of rising entrepreneurs and smaller companies, which in itself is you know, very important for our competitiveness as an economy. So just wanted to comment that because often I think in the popular press, we hear the word Silicon Valley as if there are five companies that are controlling the entire uh, way things are done here, which is not the case and, and should never be the case. So just wanted to share that thought, but thank you for your uh, terrific commentary. And again, congratulations on a, on a wonderful call today, folks. I think that's exactly right. And even within, uh, as, you, as you point out, there, there are big companies like your Facebooks and your Googles and your Twitters to some extent. And then there are, of course, uh, startups that don't have the dominant market position, don't have billions of users, and definitely have a very different, uh, they're, they're looking at Washington with a very different lens and they have very different sets of issues. And even within tech, uh, of course, there are big differences between uh, the companies between, say, the telecoms, which sometimes get lumped into tech, and 
uh, the content providers and, and, and the social media companies, like they all do have different interests. And I think we're even seeing it, a division among the social media companies right now. I think Twitter and Facebook are both under scrutiny over the role of Russia on, the, on their platforms and both are behaving uh, quite differently in response to it. So uh, I think that's exactly right. That Silicon Valley is not one big monolith and that lots of different corners and lots of different parts of Silicon Valley have different interests and uh, different outlooks on what's going on here in DC. Hey, uh, D Doug Price, I, I think that to combine both presentations, this idea, this is Doug Price, by the way, uh, the, the, the combination of the issue that I think one of the, the lines I, I have heard and, and, and appropriated is that the, the science of campaigning has eclipsed the art of governance. Uh, I, I think that the, the, the issue about Silicon Valley is that big data changes behavior of the vested interest with, with money. $10 million can go an enormous way if you know how to exploit the platform. So, so to an extent, I guess my question becomes, from a late legislative perspective, what are the options in the current environment to get progress? Because as you pointed out, there was great outrage about the browser history, but there has been no action. And now to my knowledge, the browser history is readily available uh, as well as the preferences from Facebook. I'll, I'll mute up and listen to your, your thoughts. Well, I think it's a, a good question and it's, uh, I used to cover lobbying and it's one that no one exactly has figured out. But in, in Washington, it's pretty easy to stop something in its tracks, but in order to affirmatively, uh, and that's not always true because of course the browser history reversal did not get stopped. But in general, lobbying against something is easier than lobbying for it. Um, putting new protections into place is, uh, is much harder than uh, stopping ones from getting overturned. And by and large, uh, I think the American political system is much more geared towards uh, gridlock than what we see in parliamentary systems for a variety of reasons. Uh, the way our parties are structured, the way our parties are financed, uh, the way the presidential system is. Uh, but by and large, we are a country that moves slowly, especially on legislation and lawmaking. And Silicon Valley is a place uh, where, as in, in your name, uh, likes to disrupt things, uh, likes to break things and move quickly. Uh, and, and when Washington and Silicon Valley meet, there's often a difference in expectations. Uh, keep in mind that between Lyndon Johnson and Barack Obama was uh, uh, more, than, uh, more than about 50 years in terms of getting a more universal healthcare system in place. That's a long, long time. That was a legislative priority of Democrats and it took them 50 years and they did not achieve universal coverage. So uh, by and large, our government is not built for speed. And uh, getting any proactive uh, bill or wh whether, whatever you are proposing through Congress is a very, very difficult proposition, uh, no matter what it is. And uh, that's sort of just the reality of our system. Byron, thank you very much, Chris. Thanks for having me.